Hi, I'm Cliff Alaperti with ImmortalEphemera.com and today uh, something a little unusual and something very old, I technically antique. 1916 Watercolor Company of New York. Set of 80 premium photos. We're going to see all 80 of these silent stars and there are a lot of big ones. The paper stock photo and it's an odd size. Uh, they're four and a quarter by eight and five eighths inches. So to give you an idea Ah, there's a postcard. Whoops. Bigger than a postcard. Smaller than a bread box. Ah, there it is with the quarter compared to it. And as you can see, these are on paper stock. And it's, it's kind of like a uh, quality magazine page is what I would say. There's plenty of flexibility. You can crease it. It's not going to tear too easily. I mean, I can do this and Norma Talmadge is not tearing. Uh, so, 1916, early period, uh, stars had only been recognized as stars for a few years now in the movies, and this is one of the earlier sets uh, commemorating them. So here they come, all 80. Enjoy. So it's 1916, and stars are big, and they're so big they're leaping out of the pages of the movie magazines and into uh, extra collectibles for you to pin up, around, pin up on your wall or collect. This is the 1916 Watercolor Company of New York. Paper premium photo set of 80 different film stars. Very large set for the time. And it leads off with May Alice, and I mentioned uh, Movie Magazine. She was actually married to James R. Quirk, who was the editor of Photoplay since its founding. She, ret uh, she retired after marrying him, shortly after marrying him. She's uh, probably best known for teaming up with Harold Lockwood, who we'll see a little later in this set. These are on a paper stock. They have an odd measurement. They're about four and a quarter inches wide by eight and five, inch, five eighths inches tall. Here's Edwin August, number two. Now these are unnumbered, but uh, I have arranged them alphabetically by last name. And the ones we're looking at are actually the gallery on my site at immortalephemera.com. So if you want to see the stills, you can see them there. King Baggett. And you can see down the bottom, it mentions the movie studio that the film star was associated with at the time and produced by the Watercolor Company of New York. Leia Baird. And the film studio helps date a few of these. It'll come up a few times as we go through all 80. These have blank backs. There's Theta Barra. Shortly after a fool there was, made her the uh, famed vamp. Bessie Barascali. A youthful John Barrymore. Already active in films. Probably still more famous as a stage star. She's already legendary on the stage. Beverly Bain. Carlisle Blackwell. As you can see, some of the uh, facsimile signatures on these. Obviously, they're not really signed. The signatures printed in the photo. Uh, some of them are a little tough to make out, but I've handled a number of these over the years. Alice Brady, very young herself, daughter of uh, William A. Brady, a famous theatrical producer. And uh, she's a pretty popular character actress come to talkies. Uh, she died in 1939, but before that she played uh, Ginger Rogers' aunt in The Gay Divorcee, and she was the mother in My Man Godfrey. And it played Batty Mothers. A little bit of the voice like Billy Burke, who we'll see in a minute. It's Fritzy Brunette. Here's Billy Burke, Glinda the Good Witch in The Wizard of Oz. Laurel and Hardy regular, Mae Bush. Younger there. The original king of the movies, Ben Hur star, Francis X. Bushman. There's the biggest star in the set, Charlie Chaplin. And you can see that he's a mutual star, so that this is the year that he signed with Mutual, 1916. 
And I'd hesitate to give values on these, but I wouldn't hesitate. The chaplain in this condition, which is pretty sharp, I would probably put $75 on there and not settle for less than 50 Most of the more common ones, Marguerite Clark, big start of time, but a common as far as we're concerned, more in the 7 to $10 range. So it's a rather valuable set, and you can see from uh, the right edge of the Clark, you can see some tears. Paper is pretty light stock paper. It is fragile. So it's condition sensitive set. You can ask for a premium for uh, those in better condition. Ethel Clayton. Marguerite Courteau. Or Couteau. Viola Dana. Marie Doro. She was popular at the uh, earlier part of the century. She pops up a lot in glamour poses in the old Burr Macintosh Monthly magazine. I've seen her at least three or four times in those. Mrs. Sidney Drew. Hopefully I didn't skip Mr. I have him on the list before then. She's actually uh, Lucille McVeigh and she's the second Mrs. Sidney Drew. And there's Sydney. He died in 1919, so that's a hundred years ago as we as I do this. Uh, he's actually the uncle to Lionel, John, and Ethel Barrymore. That's where the Drew name, the, the Drew part of the name is passed down all the way to Drew Barrymore in the family. Bessie Eaton, and that one's actually dated 1916. And at the bottom right, you can see Witzel of L.A. That's the uh, photographer's uh, photography studio where this was taken. Douglas Fairbanks. Still a triangle here before... And it's before he formed his own production company, which is, was in 1916, so... This puts a, it helps put a very definite date to it. A triangle, he worked on the D.W. Griffith. Dustin Farnham. Pauline Frederick, another Witzel shot, it looks like. Uh, Frederick is a very well known stage star from the, around the turn of the century, and by this time she's a very popular film star as well. Mary Fuller. Dorothy Gish. Looking more serious that I'm used to seeing her look. And of course she's the younger sister of Lillian Gish. Great shot. Wonderful eyes. And this, uh, by the date of this, is probably after the birth of the nation and probably around the time uh, she was doing her bits for Intolerance. Another popular vamp of the period, uh, Louise Glom. She only appeared in one movie after 1922, so she's in her heyday right here. Edna Goodrich. Huntley Gordon. Kitty Gordon. Jane Grey. Here comes a big one. William S. Hart, he's already about 50 years old here. Man's been in showbiz since 1888 at this point. And he's the big famous Western star, one of the first cowboy stars, uh, actually born in Newburgh, New York. And one of his big films, Hell's Hinges, was released during this year. Ormy Hawley. Helen Holmes. Be one of several serial stars that we'll see in this set. She starred in The Hazards of Helen. One of my favorite names, Jewel Hunt. Peggy Highland. Alice Joyce, big star from the time she's in all the. Uh, all the film star sets throughout this from this time throughout the 1920s following. 
She's not in as many sets. That's Annette Kellerman. The record-breaking champion swimmer. And she's uh, probably best known with the Esther Williams playing her in The Million Dollar Mermaid in 1952. Which I think kind of helped her be more famous for a scandalous one-piece bathing suit. But this was a major worldwide star of popular culture from the turn of the century up through this time. Dorothy Kelly. J. Warren Carrigan, whose name's almost fully obscured. You'll see him build on cards throughout sets as J. Warren Carrigan, as Jack Carrigan, as Warren Carrigan. Big star through the 20s. Anita King. Molly King. There's May Allison's partner, Harold Lockwood. Vivian Martin. And it looks a little different just because of that Underwood and Underwood uh, studio logo at the bottom. Edna Mayo. I'm probably going to butcher this one. Beatrice. Maybe it's Beatrice Michelena. B E A T R I Z. Beatrice Michelena. Mary Miles Minter. She left films in 1923 after she got caught up in the scandal around the murder of William Desmond Taylor, so she's a pretty famous name and highly collected. Owen Moore, Mary Pickford's first husband, husband before uh, Doug Fairbanks. And really, the only place I saw him is with his brothers, Matt Moore and Tom Moore. They played three brothers in a early talkie called Side Street from 1929. A little static, but a fun movie. There's the wizard, Frank Morgan, about 25, 26 years old there. And he looks it. Girl with the bee stung lips, Mae Murray. Francis Nelson with a tear at the bottom left. I have a feeling I'm still stuck with that one, no matter when, how long ago I scanned these. Virginia Norton. Mabel Normand. In her heyday, she's already teamed up with Chaplin, and she's teaming with uh, Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle at this time. Huge star, major, major silent comedian, and highly collected. Muriel Ostrich. Basically, Ostrich ostrich with an E on the end. Like the bird. Virginia Pearson. Olga Petrova. And if Chaplin's the key... Is probably your second key, Mary Pickford. I'd probably start out with about a $35 price tag on her and settle for no less than $25. America's Sweetheart from Toronto, Canada. Another big star at the time, Wallace Reed. This is after he signed with last game, became a really big star. And before he had his accident and all the troubles that led to his early death. Charles Richmond. Cleo Ridgely. Another serial queen, uh, Ruth Rowland. Jackie Saunders. Myrtle Stedman. Popular star of the times, Anita Stewart. P. 
paired up a lot with Earl Williams, who we'll see in a little bit, a minute or so. Lucille Lee Stewart. Blanche Sweet. Big early star for D.W. Griffith. She's in uh, one I write up on the site, Showgirl in Hollywood, an early talkie with Alice White starring from 1930. And I really enjoyed her in the Kevin Brownlow documentary, Hollywood, from 1980. She lived to a ripe old age of 90, passing away in 1986. Seems familiar. Seems like a familiar person because of the uh, Brownlow documentary, though. Norma Talmadge, a bit of an oddity. There's no Constance Talmadge in the set, and I think Constance is probably a bigger star at this time. Norma's much bigger in the night throughout the 1920s, taking on more dramatic roles. So another big comedian of the era, Faye Tincher. Who died six months shy of her 100th birthday in 1983. She just misses the centenarian page on a mortal metal. Ah, tongue twist in my own sight. A mortal ephemera, where I list all the stars who made it to age 100, but she was close enough that I put a picture of her in the uh, accompanying article. Lenore Ulrich. Valley Valley, who I probably should have looked up because that name's always made me curious. Lillian Walker, I called her Dimples, which you can see a hint of there. Henry B. Walthall, it's uh, D.W. Griffith's little colonel in The Birth of a Nation. I enjoy him in the talk, he's a character actor, he's a... Uh, in Dante's Inferno, excellent movie from Fox, I believe, with Spencer Tracy. And he played Dr. Manette in uh, Tale of Two Cities. And then I believe he died the same year as those two movies came out in 1936. So, rest in peace, Henry B. Fanny Ward, who would have already starred in uh, Cecil B. DeMille's first version of The Cheat in 1915. And here's the queen of the serials, Pearl White, most famous for The Perils of Pauline. And she holds a special place with me because one of her last films was Plunder, which it was the second film for a very young Warren William, still going under his uh, birth name of Warren Crutch. And you can actually see that there's uh, scraps of it survive. I think my copy, a uh, DVD, I think I got from Grapevine, but I believe it's shown up in other compilations since then. Anyway, Queen of the Serials, Pearl White. Don't want to digress too much. There's Anita Stewart's partner, screen partner, Earl Williams. And you'll see Earl sometimes spelled with an E on the end and sometimes without. He's done a lot of collectibles from this period. Another big serial star, The Adventures of Kathleen with Kathleen Williams. One of the earliest serials. And the final piece in the set is Clara Kimball Young, or Clara Kimball Young. Huge star at this time. She had some marriage problems, uh, suits and countersuits. And after she left, uh, she formed her own studio. Actually, her lover, Louis J. Selznick, did. And the interesting bit of trivia there is he's the father of the famed producer David O. Selznick. And Myron Selznick. But these are the 1916 Watercolor Company of New York paper premium photos, set of 80, one of the earliest film star sets you're going to come across. Pretty neat, right? Uh, 80 early silent film stars on paper premiums from the Watercolor Company in 1916. And you can see the a gallery showing all those images at immortalephemera.com, link below. And I actually have plenty of these still for sale as I make this. Hopefully you'll watch this sometime in the future and they'll all be gone and I'll be looking for more. Because uh, they're pretty cool and I will buy them whenever I see them, if the price is right, obviously. Anyway, you can shop them at store.immortalephemera.com. The link is also below. And you can also uh, find a subscribe button below. Click that if you uh, want to be alerted to more videos coming like this one. Hope you enjoyed them. More coming.